Hi there, and welcome to WebWork. In this video, we'll walk you through the key features to help you set up your workspace and start tracking effectively. Before you start adding members, the first thing you should do is go to Settings, then go to Features. Over here, you'll be able to see all the current features that are available in your workspace, as well as switch on those that you want and switch off those that you do not want to see. For example, if you do not want screenshots in your workspace, you can simply click on this button and click on Save. Now, screenshots will not be appearing in the workspace. After choosing which features you want to appear in the workspace, you can start inviting members to your workspace. To do that, you should go to People, then click on Members, and over here you'll be able to see all the members that are in your workspace, as well as invite them. To invite members, you should go to the top right corner and click on Invite. You can invite members by email, by entering their email, selecting their team and project. You can also invite by bulk invite. You upload a file with the name, email of the members. This way you can invite multiple members at the same time. Secondly, you can copy the link. This way the members need to just click on the link and they'll be automatically invited to the workspace. You can also invite members by integration. You can integrate by Google Workspace and Slack for seamless integration and invitation of members. For example, if I want to invite the member by email, I can do that by going to by email, writing down the member's email. And then I can choose the member type. There are four different member types. Executive manager, team manager, project manager, and employee. I want him to be executive manager, so I'll choose executive manager. You can also choose the team and project, but that's optional. Now you just click on invite. And here you can see that Adam was invited to the workspace. To view if Adam has accepted the invitation, you can do that by going to onboarding status. And over here you'll be able to see that he has not accepted the invitation since this is red. You can see other information such as if he has done two-factor authentication, logged into the desktop app, tracked time, his desktop version, and send him a reminder if he needs to update the desktop version. For your members to start tracking time, they need a project. To create a project, you should go down to Projects, then click on Projects. Over here, you'll be able to see all the current projects that are in your workspace. Now, to create a project, you should go to the top right corner, click on Create Project. Here, you'll be able to add the name. For example, I'm going to write Test. You'll be able to choose if it's billable or not. Put a deadline for it. For example, I want this to start on Monday, and the deadline will be until Friday. You can put a time estimate, for example, 40 hours, and a budget estimate, $1,000. You can also add project notes if you want. To assign members, you should click on the Members section. Choose the members that you want to assign this project to. For example, I want to assign myself. You can also add project managers and project viewers. To view the properties of this project, you can click on Properties. You'll be able to add the weekly limit per member, as well as the hourly rate for this project, as well as the screenshot mode. To save the project, you should click on Create Project. And once you click on that, the project will be created. To create tasks for this project, you should click on Go to Tasks. Here you'll be able to see all the current tasks for this project, as well as for other projects as well. To create a new task, you should click on Add the new task. Here you'll be able to change the name of the task. For example, I want to put it as test number two. You can also attach any files to this task, change the status of it. For example, I want this to be completed by Friday, so I'll put the date as Friday. As well as change the priority. There are currently four different priorities, urgent, high, normal, and low. I'll put this as urgent. As well as assign members to this project. I want to assign myself, for example. Once you've completed everything, you can click on this arrow to finalize the task. Once you click on that button, the task will be created. You can also create subtasks. To do that, you should hover over the task and click on Create Subtask. After you click on Subtask, you'll be able to add the name, attach any documents, put the deadline, set the priority, and assign members. Once you have created projects and tasks for your members to track, the first thing they should do is download the WebWork desktop application. To do that, they should go to the WebWork website, and from here they can click on Download, and choose whatever version they want to download, Windows, Mac, or Linux. Once your members have downloaded the application, they are ready to start tracking time. After your members have downloaded the application, your workspace will start to come to life. 
Like here in the real time section, we can see all the current members that are online and tracking time. We can also see some other information such as work location, project, task, activity description, tracker, the apps and website they're using, as well as their status. You can also filter by members. For example, I can choose myself and see what I'm currently doing. Here I'm in the office, I'm working on this project and this task. You can filter by project, team, title, status, and etc. You can also choose which columns you want to see, such as work location, project, task, and so on. And in the top section, you'll be able to see some other information, such as the amount of members in your workspace, currently not productive, working now, offline, and so on. And if you want to get a better understanding at how much time your members have actually tracked for, you can go to Reports, then click on Tracked Hours. And here you'll be able to see the current tracked hours for all the members. For example, I want to change the time frame so it can show from the 20th of May until the 23rd of May. Here, you'll be able to see the amount of time tracked for these specific dates. For example, if I find myself here, I can see that on May 20th, I tracked for 7 hours and 50 minutes. And on May 21st, which was today, I have tracked for 3 hours and 6 minutes, as well as the total. You can also change to view this time frame by day, by week, or by month as well as change the viewing methods such as hours or amount. And if you want to view this information in a chart, you can do that by clicking on chart. Here you'll be able to see this information as a chart, or you can change it as a bar chart, a line chart, as well as change what members you want to see. You can also change what values you want to see, such as percentage or normal values. And if you want to create custom charts, you can do that by going into tracked hours then selecting specific members that you want to be in this chart, as well as the values. For example, I want these specific members to be in the chart, as well as this specific data. Then you can simply right click, then click on chart range, and choose a specific chart you want. For example, I want a column chart that is grouped. Here you'll be able to see the chart itself, as well as export it if you want. Next, in the report section, you can view other data. For example, the members timeline, attendance, activity level, activity description, app and website usage, and so on. After reports, we have monitoring. Here you'll be able to monitor the members' productivity as well as their activity throughout the day. Here we have screenshots. In the screenshot section, you'll be able to view the screenshots of the members throughout the day, as well as view their activity during that screenshot. Next, we have daily activity. In the daily section, you'll be able to see a member's activity throughout the day so for example, you'll be able to see what the member was doing for each minute of the day, as well as their activity, project, task, and etc. Next, we have GPS tracking. This allows you to track the member's location whenever they start tracking time. This is only available when you track time using the mobile application. Next, we have unusual activity. In this section, you'll be able to view if members have any unusual activity, as well as see what was specifically unusual during their work shift. Next, we have productivity. In this section, you'll be able to see how productive a member is during the day. Like here in the productivity, you'll be able to see all the data needed to evaluate if your member was productive or not. Then in apps and websites, you'll be able to choose what applications and websites are considered productive, non-productive, neutral, and on-set. After that, we have work-life balance and burnout risk. Using these two features, you'll be able to understand if a member has a healthy work-life balance, if they're at risk at burning out, or if they're underworked or overworked. After the productivity and monitoring, we have WebWork AI. Using WebWork AI, you can get reports on specific timeframes and members, as well as ask questions related to the workspace. So for example, I can ask the WebWork AI, how much time did I track on the 23rd of May? As we can see here, it gave me a report of how much time I tracked on the 23rd of May. We can see the project I was tracking, how much time I tracked using the desktop tracker, how much time I added manually, and so on. It can also create reports. So for example, I want a report of last week's attendance. As we can see, it gave me attendance report for the last week, so we can see who left early or tracked less, as well as their reasoning for leaving early. Besides that, we can see the amount of time tracked, their idle time, activity level, and their shifts. Besides basic reports, the AI can also do actions. 
So for example, if I ask it to make a project, as you can see, it will ask for details. And once I give the details, so for example, the project name, start date, end date, time estimation, and etc., it will go ahead and create the project. You can also make it so the AI can send you reports based on specific events or triggers. So if you go to the settings, then go down to WebWork AI, and then we go into events. Here we can choose specific events. So for example, project time and budget overrun, or task time and budget overrun. So once the time or budget is exceeded, you'll get an email with the AI analysis. In the email, there'll be an analysis identifying where the most time or budget was spent, as well as some helpful insights. After events, we have periodic reviews. Over here, you'll be able to set a frequency and choose the metrics that the AI will analyze and send to you via email. So for example, over here, we can choose the frequency of the report, either daily or weekly, as well as the time we want to get this report. Then we can choose the metrics that we want to get reports of. So for example, top five members with the most track time, non-productive apps, highest activity level, lowest activity level, missed deadline tasks, and most late arrivals. Once we choose the specific metrics we want to see, the AI will start sending you reports. And lastly, we have chat automations. Over here, the AI will be able to send you automated messages in either Slack or the WebWork chat. Here we can see we can switch on birthday messages or weekly or daily reports. Once you're ready to pay out your members, the first thing you should do is go to the timesheets section. From here, you can go to the view and edit timesheets. From here, you'll be able to view the amount of hours tracked within a specific time frame that you can choose, as well as the total amount of time tracked for that specific day, and the amount you should pay them for that day. Here, you'll also be able to see additional information such as the task they were working on, the project, how many time they manually added, and etc. Members can also request to add time in the timesheet section. For example, if someone forgot to switch on their track while they were working, they can come here and request that time. Once that time has been requested, the owner or executive manager can approve or reject this time. They can do that by going into the time request section. You can set different permissions for specific roles to accept or deny time requests. When your members submit their timesheets, you can approve them or deny them by going into the timesheet approval section. From here, you'll be able to approve or deny the timesheets. You can also set how you want to pay your members. For example, you can choose between paying them through hourly rates or a fixed salary. To manage the payrolls of your members, you can do that by going down into the finance section. Then from here, you can go to manage payroll. From here, you'll be able to adjust the hourly rate of your members, as well as if they have access to the finance section, what payroll type they have, how you're going to pay them through web work, as well as their pay period. You can also view all the payment and payroll integrations that have been set up and that need to be set up. Now to pay your members through web work, you should set up a payroll type. For example, let's look at my payroll details. First, I'll choose a payroll type. For example, fixed salary. Over here, I can choose the frequency of the salary. For example, daily, weekly, or monthly. I'll choose monthly. As well as the salary amount. I'll write $1,000. I can go ahead and click Save. And then I should choose the payment system that I'll be using. For example, paying through WebWork directly, or directly exporting them to the payment systems. You can also check which integrations have been set up or not. For example, this integration has not been set up because it's gray. And this one, the member has started setting it up, but has not finished it. And the green one means that the integration is fully set up. And if you want to pay your members through timesheets, you can go ahead and choose a timesheet approval type. Here you can choose the pay period type, for example, daily, weekly, bi-weekly, and etc. As well as when this pay period will start. Once you fill that out, you can go ahead and click save. For the timesheet approval system to work, you'll need to fill out the hourly rate for your members. For example, I should add the hourly rate for myself, as well as I can choose the currency that I'd like to use. And then you should also choose the payment system that you'll use. Once this is ready, you can go ahead into the payment section and start paying out your members. You can actually create automated invoices. This way, whenever a member approves a timesheet, an invoice will be created. Or whenever your payroll is set to fixed salary and it's the end of the month, an invoice will be automatically created. This way, you can just go to the payment section and pay this member. Besides automatic invoices, you can create specific invoices for your clients and for your members. You can do that by going into the invoice section. After the finance section, we have time off. Here, in the holidays section, you'll be able to create holidays and choose if these holidays are working or non-working days. Then we have leave. 
Over here you'll be able to request leaves for yourself and for your members, as well as approve or deny them. And we have leave balance. Here you'll be able to check the leave balance for yourself and for your members. Then we have shifts. In the shifts section, you'll be able to create shifts for specific members, as well as adjust them if needed. Right after shifts, we have communication. Here we have video meetings and chat. In video meetings, you'll be able to create video meetings with your members in Webwork. And in chat, you'll be able to send messages to your members directly through Webwork and create channels. Next, we have tools. Here we have standups and announcements. These are messages that will be sent into the Webwork chat or Slack if the integration is set up. And lastly, we have integrations. Over here, you'll be able to see all the current integrations available in Webwork as well as set them up. After integrations, we have migrations. In this tab, you'll be able to see which platforms you're able to migrate from to Webwork. And in the last tab, we have perks. Here, you'll be able to see what discounts and specials you get by using Webwork. Now you're all set to get started. Boost employee performance and manage your team with ease. Start today to save time and money with Webwork.